Hi everyone. It is still May 8, 2019. This is your weather warfare update. Have to tell you, I am uh, I'm I'm not feeling so great. It's hard listening to so many Americans just not get it. They don't get it. And it's staring them right in the face. You know, our environment has changed radically, and it changed very quickly. So why they're not asking questions about what's happening in the sky, what's, what are these rains all about that are flooding um, areas that, well, in Houston, some are now saying that the rains are Harvey rains. Uh, this is just from rains and thunderstorms and you have hundreds of homes that have been flooded over 400 homes all right well we'll get to that but I so wish you know we could hear somebody scream this is all deliberate weather modification that would that would re-energize me but watching this you know day after day okay here are Oklahoma Calves stuck. I've never seen this river. I've never seen this ever out here. Look, look, cows run through things. You did hear him, right? He said he's never seen this. Never seen this river like this. If anybody knows if those calves were saved, please leave a comment below. All right. Millions threatened. Isn't it interesting? Mainstream media, now we're hearing 40 million threatened, uh, 13 million threatened. Now it's back up to 38 million threatened, but this was earlier today. Powerful storms is kicking up trouble in Texas tonight and up into the central plains. Millions are threatened by flooding, hail, and tornadoes. Here's Maria Villarreal. Major flooding surrounded homes in several Houston neighborhoods, leaving drivers stranded and causing high water rescues throughout the day. You go, you go, you go. Roads submerged in water caught drivers off guard. Matthew Graver left his minivan behind when things got too dangerous. People were stuck everywhere on the side of the road, so it wasn't fun. I swam home last night. Although there are no reported deaths, hundreds of homes in the Kingwood area were flooded out. Well, there's a funnel, David, right there in front of us. The same storm system stretched That's into Oklahoma phone, right? and is being blamed for a powerful tornado and floodwaters that engulfed the small town of Sayre. Back in Texas, crews recovered the body of a man who was reportedly swept away by floodwaters in Austin while preparing for yet another round of storms. The spillway here in Dallas is pushing all that storm water downstream to try and make room for more, and it could take several days before things get back to normal. Jeff, the governor here in Texas, Greg Abbott, he's also ordered emergency crews on standby with severe thunderstorm and tornado watches expected throughout the night. That's right, and they're calling for more storms right on through till Friday. Look over here if you can see through the rain. This is this is Kansas, by the way. 
a pretty empty turnpike and the reason for that is as mike said it is closed just south of wellington there's a few vehicles who are taking supplies down there but otherwise it is closed we want to take you again above that area some skyhawk 12 video i shot earlier today that really just shows you the scope of this the kta tells me the turnpike is closed from wellington to exit four that is near oklahoma a spoke all right and a spokesperson said they don't know when it's going to reopen. Um, it's a major, major um, thoroughfare. So when these close down, it causes tremendous inconvenience. More farms gone. This is Kansas. Look at the scope of this flooding. What do we have here? Sugarland, Texas. The overnight rainfall caused several streets in this area to flood, forcing drivers to park just about everywhere, some even spending the night in their cars, turning this road into a parking lot. One woman says for her, this flood was almost as bad as Harvey. Streets flooded. It doesn't fl it doesn't happen. Cars parked everywhere. Cars have been turning around. I can't take my son to school today because we can't get out of here. Water, water, and even more water overflowing. Never have seen it this way. Along with frustration. <laughs> this is 17-year-old Aiden, a high school junior. I'm just going around seeing if anybody needs help. And he was up late last night and early this morning. Because over there, it gets pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much to here. I had to carry some uh, lady that spent the night at my house. That's right. He's a real-life Prince Charming who saved a damsel in distress. She started uh, pretty much thanking me. Um, she wanted to cry, too. I was like, don't worry about it. And today, he's on a mission to check on all of his neighbors. Gosh, that's deep. Sugarland received more than nine inches of rain since yesterday. The city reports their storm drains are over capacity and over 100 vehicles abandoned. A car can be replaced easily. Yeah. Your life really can't. Wise words. One father left his car at home and took out a raft to get his kids to higher ground. While Aiden continued his trek... Hello? to check on neighbors. Do you need any help? This mother okay, now it's on to the next home. All right, if uh, you need any help, I'll be around. Thank you. Now, the majority of street flooding in Sugarland has been cleared, but of course, there are some impassable roads like the one behind me. For all that information, head to our website, click to Houston. Good for him, 17 years old. <clears throat> A whole lot of much older adults wouldn't even think to do that. A whole lot of folks there, a lot of homes got flooded, uh, and there's a threat for more rainfall, right? Len Mia, that's right. You know, the rain started about 45 minutes ago. It's been on and off, at times very, very heavy, and it's exactly what residents have been concerned about, possibly a repeat from yesterday's downpour. This is what they've been dealing with all day, this type of of debris. People stayed home from work today. They stayed home from school cleaning up and concerned about how storm drains will handle more rainfall. They say the flooding from yesterday's downpour was so unexpected because this part of Kingwood was actually not flooded by Hurricane Harvey. This afternoon, friends are helping Meg Gansey tear out soaked sheetrock in her dining room. Her damaged furniture and other property are now lining the front yard. How much money and damages. Oh, I have, I can't even begin to think about that. Right now the focus is just getting the water out and anything wet. And plenty remains wet here in the northeast section of Kingwood. Residents here on Shady Maple Court are busy getting rid of waterlogged mattresses, carpets, chairs, even a TV. You know, we've really tried to salvage as much as we could. This was Michael Scott's home yesterday during that fast and furious downpour. Nine inches of rain flooded his first floor. His concern right now, what will happen during the next storm, especially with the ground already so saturated? He's paying $550 for a dumpster to take all of this away. The problem is all this debris going down the street and all this debris going everywhere else. And that's a big concern because, you know, we don't want to, of course, pull out our community and trash everywhere. 
Around the corner, the Howard family is trying to make sense of the flooding situation. These homes were not affected by Hurricane Harvey. Something's different now. Something's happened in Kingwood. There's, there's, it's very strange to see this level of flooding um, after so many years of not having it. He's so look into it, please. Look into why it is so strange, because it is really strange. Man is doing this. These are rains. Look, again, I have to say, Texas Weather Modification Association. The director of the Texas Weather Modification Association during an interview, a mainstream media interview, he said, we can create rain, more rain over larger areas for longer duration. So, oh God, it's like we're living in two different worlds. After so many years of not having it. His father, who's in a wheelchair, was taken upstairs when water came rushing in. It just started coming through the, the back door, the windows, you know, I mean, it was just coming through everywhere. Some of it. And it sounds like he's talking about a hurricane. He's talking about rain, uh, a thunderstorm. Okay, we, we, we didn't see this before, and we're seeing it now over and over and over again. All right, Iowa. Good afternoon. More than two straight days of rain is causing major flash flooding all across central Iowa. The rising waters have shut down a big portion of Highway 34 between Osceola and Sheraton. Shana Humphreys joins us live from Lucas, one of the towns on that stretch of road. Shana. Kevin and Cynthia, take a look behind me. All of this water, this what looks like a river, is actually downtown Lucas. Somewhere beneath all of that is Highway 34. Obviously no way to pass through parts of this town, and that is especially the case for one woman we caught up with who was trapped in her home today by all of this water. Several inches of rain mean big problems in little towns. It was terrible. I thought it was going to blow me away. And that's, that's the worst I've ever seen it here. Some of central Iowa's highways were shut down Thursday after small creeks and streams overflowed onto the roadways. Obviously, there are a lot of county blacktops that, and gravel roads that are also impacted by those. In Lucas, one of those small gravel roads leads to Mary Holmes' house. Now, I like being isolated, but this is kind of ridiculous. The lake had come to my back door, I guess. Being trapped at home after a long storm is nothing new in her part of town. Yeah, this is one of the worst. I mean, see my mailbox? <laughs> the last one, it took my mailbox. But it's still standing so far. This time around, Holmes still has to play the waiting game, even though the rain has stopped. The forecasts hold true. Uh, the crest should be sometime late this evening. Well, usually if it quits raining, it goes down fairly fast. But it was still sprinkling. In the meantime, she's thought of some creative ways to try to make it off her property. I thought about getting my lawnmower, put the battery in, and use it to go over. <laughs> but that uh, it's soaking wet under there too. You might not want to do that. Safest bet is always to wait it out. All right. Yeah. Here. Um, well, let me. This is apparently. Ah, gone. Sorry, you are rate limited. This is Twitter. What's going on here? Oh, okay. Jeff Linder. I guess he's a meteorologist in Houston. We've had some other ones. We had uh, July 4th. Listen to what he says. Um... By the way, if you hear reverb or the audio not working, th this will probably be the last video that I do like this because I, I play the videos back to make sure that the audio is fine, it's fine, and then I post it, and then it comes out with that, you know, echo, and there's, that's YouTube. I can't figure out how to fix it, so... Anyway, listen to Jeff Linder. We've had some other ones. We had uh, July 4th yeah. last year. That was very localized, kind of in the downtown area. So this has been, this has been up there. This has been a pretty significant event. And it, it's, it's really significant when you look at 
the totals in such a short amount of time. You know, if you look at Sugar Land, uh, we had one report down there of six and a half inches of rain in 50 minutes. That's Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Six and a half inches in 50 minutes. Okay, something is very wrong with that. And that really should beg questions in people's minds. That's a tremendous rainfall rate. I mean, that is, that is every bit of a Harvey uh, rainfall rate that we had. The highest yeah. rainfall rate we had with Harvey was 6.7 inches in one hour. So we were... Um, okay. Weather is being used as a weapon. When you get six and a half inches in 50 minutes, you know that that's a weapon. Well, if you do just a little bit of research on weather modification, then you know. All right, they're using this as a weapon. And, yeah, it's... Let's look at some pictures, shall we? This is um, Kansas, a slideshow. Look at these clouds. Look at this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is this is similar to the cloud that I saw on this live broadcast when they had the Moore, Oklahoma tornado, and I caught a split in this cloud, a cloud like it, obviously made by frequencies. They had hail, they had tornadoes, but even the tornadoes don't look like regular tornadoes anymore. Look at that lightning. Oh boy. Kansas flooded homes, communities. <clears throat> unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Roads washed out. I guess Lowe's is doing a great business on sump pumps. And where are we now? Not even sure. Coverage bringing you the latest from some of the hardest hit areas that continue to be impacted by flooding this evening. We want to begin in Augusta, where just this afternoon the Kansas Health Department placed the city under a boil water advisory. It comes after several inches of rain fell, flooding roads and parks and creating other problems. And all is there, she joins us now live. Anna? Melissa, well, we are at Lulu and 8th Street. This is pretty much right off of the main road when you come into Augusta. We want to show you a stalled van right there in the middle of the street. You can also see some other cars trying to make their way through this road, which is not advised by some of the officials, as you just don't know how deep it is. But we have seen some cars make it across. We just don't know if they've seen any damage afterwards. Uh, but obviously, this is not the only car that's been stalled in the middle of a road. There have to be at least six to eight in this neighborhood that are now undrivable. Water is clear up to some driveways and homes. While people say the water has gone down, it's not enough with more rain on the way. Water ripped through Garden Park in Augusta Wednesday, only a couple minutes from Melissa Smith's neighborhood. So we're surrounded. That's off. Day after day of rain, turning her street into a river. 
lot of these people went through this flood once, um, and we all returned. We all returned to this area, which we returned to what is home. And so to go through it again, to see it like this again, to know that not all the pumps are working, uh, it's devastating. City crews worked to unclog a flap gate. Divers had to go down to free debris so water can flow out of the city like it's designed to. This is now what surrounds Smith's home. Hope and pray that it doesn't doesn't come up anymore. Haley Myers lives in the same neighborhood. We can't get out. We cannot drive. She and her family improvised, getting some needed groceries home. Our backyard, the water's all the way up to our um, back deck. Our sump pump doesn't stop. It's been running for three days. It hasn't stopped. Um, basically, we're just stuck. We're stuck. Both don't know what their homes will look like if they get any more rain. But it's going to get worse. We're just going to prepare for it. Okay. St. Charles area. I've shown this in videos before. Uh, I think two, when the levees broke and there wasn't much flooding, I showed a drone uh, footage of the St. Charles area yesterday. And now we're looking at far more flooding than what I put in my video last night. And remember, they were talking about this RV storage place. It looks like most of the people got their RVs out, except for a few. Well, I guess we're just going to be seeing more and more of this. Flash floods force people from homes, close schools, highways in central Kansas. This is uh, Slate Creek near Wellington in Kansas. Widespread flooding, southern Kansas. Well, start um, trying to get your taste buds used to maggots. And if you didn't see the last video that I posted, or the first video that I posted today, on the maggots and bioengineered milk, then watch it. But levees are breaking all over. They're breaching all over. You hear people talk about, you know, the flooding that has occurred repeatedly and they talk about their city officials not doing what they need to be doing in terms of making sure that it doesn't flood. Maybe if they did a little bit of digging and found out that, wait a second, it's not just our city officials, but it seems to be city officials all across the country what is going on here? Why are they setting us up to be flooded repeatedly? Yeah. And they're supposed to be getting more heavy rains. So, people were evacuated from their homes and schools, were closed or delayed Wednesday after Kansas was hit with back-to-back -back thunderstorms. Kansas Turnpike was closed uh, south of Wellington to the Oklahoma border. Um, that was because the Slate Creek um, had filled up, but it crested the 100-year flood mark more rain is expected to hit the area this week. Tributary of the Arkansas River, which is Slate Creek, 
was flowing over the turnpike uh, between Wellington and South Haven exits. The creek was at its peak of 25.7 feet around 3 a.m. Uh, then they had to uh, they were evacuating people at like 5 a.m. And this is just the flooding. There were tornadoes as well. The only time Slate Creek ran higher and harder was in 1975. The Rachel Bell, the Director of Business Services and Customer Relations for the Kansas Turnpike Authority, Wednesday afternoon, she said uh, she was unsure when the highway would reopen. Um, here, in between Tuesday and Wednesday morning, Wichita got 10 inches of rain within a 24-hour period. And my highlighting got screwed up, clearly. But I will link below to this article. And you can read about the evacuations and all the road closures and schools closed and Houston. In Houston, there were um, there were schools that parents couldn't get to because of the flooding. So the students actually stayed in the schools. In some areas, I think there was a high school in Kingwood. I'm not sure if that's the right town, but uh, parents were able to finally get their kids out of that high school late at night. In an elementary school, they had to stay over. This is, all of what we are living is really, it really should beg questions and I don't understand why it's not. So the frequencies are really fired up here in Texas, of course. Now, they claim that you're going to be getting more storms in Texas. So where are they? This is all created by the radar. Where are the storms that you're going to be getting? Now, are we looking at more tornadoes in Mississippi? Maybe Alabama? And they also claim Iowa and uh, all of these states, Oklahoma, Kansas, you're looking at storms, flash flooding and hail and all uh, tornadoes up until Friday. Well, tell me where, where is it? Where is it going to be coming from? They're going to manufacture it. All right, um, let me just quickly look at College of DuPage and we'll call it a night. Yep, high frequency heating. And wow, well, the satellite picture looks very different from the radar picture, that's for sure. But here we have yet another, it looks like this. the, the precipitation is, is uh, meeting up with this line storm. Look at all of these frequencies at the top of the storm. So this bizarre line of storms. Uh, we've got, how often do we see these? thousand plus mile storms. Well, you see them a lot when they are created by man. And you don't see these squared off defined lines. But once again, we have the radar firing up in all of the same states, you know, from Texas, Central Plains area, and then throughout the East Coast. So look at this, all right? This is radar and this is satellite. Okay, 
Well, I guess they're going to be expanding the storm. A whole lot of high frequency heating going on Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas. Well, you can see the harp next red. Uh, the um, harp next red rings the Doppler radar, the high frequency one. And I'm only going to do this for a few more seconds. But I will link below. And, and hey, it's kind of like, you know, you know those. Um, find the animal in the picture or whatever the kids used to. Well, you can find the rings. Which is a signature of man's hand. Right here. Right here. So, what are we going to do? Nothing, I guess. Just watch this. It's, uh, it's heartbreaking, frustrating, maddening. It's, it's everything because you know that all of these people are getting their homes flooded out and their businesses flooded out and they're hurting and you know it's deliberate and you can't get through to them. All links are below.